Welcome everyone to our challenges wrap up session. Um, hope you've enjoyed the past few weeks. I'm just going to bring back Ahmed, who is our instructor. Hey, Ahmed, good to have you back. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome on. <laughs> You're excited. Do you want to change your screen to the slides and then I'll add it to the stream? Sure. All right. All right, go for it. Cool. So welcome all. Um, we joined last time, like it's been like maybe two weeks or three weeks, I think we had the last session. And um, so we are going to talk about challenges. There were multiple submissions and there were three teams which are selected as the final one. Um, we'll go through a bit about what the challenge actually was and um, what was expectation. And then we will go through each team and how they implemented their solutions and face the challenge. All right then. So we had some um, problems out of like five five problems were given and you had to make pseudo code and the flowcharts for each of them. That was basically it. And out of five, you had to do two of them. Um, as I mentioned before, and as you all know, there were pseudo codes and flowcharts. Um, they were related to pseudo codes and flowcharts. And we gave um, these uh, conventions and all those things. Um, the requirement from this was to have minimum two challenges, like out of five, you had to do only two. Uh, and I'll do them simultaneously, though it would have been nice to do more than two, which we see that all the three final teams actually ended up doing all five of them. So that was nice. Consistency in the styling was expected. Um, it would have, though it's much more nicer to have a convention and almost all the teams actually did that. That was really nice to know. It was simple and easy to understand pseudo code was expected, like not too complicated. Um, convention is there, but it's fine to have something easy to understand. In the same way, it would be it would it would be nice to follow a convention, which most of the teams did. And same was this idea about color coding. Um, it's nice to have a consistent color coding so that it's easy to read the things. And same way, following the same color coding, all the flowcharts was expected. And we had given you some ideas like where you can make these flowcharts and all. So what exactly were the problems? So the first problem was very, um, I was gonna say simple. Uh, they are in form simple. That um, <clears throat> you have to find out if a number is admirable or not. And a number is admirable if you have all the um, proper divisors. And when you take the sum of those proper divisors, let me use the pen over here. When you, so if you have a number 30, you get all the proper divisors, which basically divide the number, except the number itself. And if you subtract it with any of these divisors, multiply two, and if the number itself comes back, that number is called an admirable number. All right. Second problem was to find leap year and to find n number of leap years. So you take an input from the user, like I want five next leap years from today and something like that, and you figure out if, a, if uh, what are the next five leap years? Again, uh, a well-known problem. The third one was to do the something same you did in the first problem. You find all the proper divisors. And when you combine them, when you take the sum of those proper divisors, if they are less than the number itself, that number is called a deficient number. If it is equal to the number itself, it's, a pro it's called a proper divisors, a perfect number, sorry. And if they are larger, the sum is larger than the number itself, it's called abundant number. So all you have to do is you take a number and you tell and find out if the number is deficient, perfect, or abundant. The fourth problem was if you are given a string and if you take an input from the user, like I want this particular character to be removed from the string. So you write a code, um, sorry, not the code, you write the pseudo code and flowcharts to do this operation. And the last one was given an input array find the second largest number not the largest but the second largest now by the way this last question was a bit tricky and i actually felt really nice that um all the three teams did it right um but i'll talk more about later on about this thing all right then so you guys had the kickoff we learned about in these things in different different sessions challenge was submitted you guys have submitted uh, your submissions three teams were finalized and out of those three we will be looking into what all three teams did um this you all know there was project uh, teams created of multiple people group of two group of three you guys made a submission um 
I will be judging on the criteria of these things. I will be seeing how you present your presentation today and what do you, uh, and I'll be asking questions in between maybe, or maybe at the end. All right. And uh, today is the final wrap up as we, uh, we can see. All right then. Um, Aileen, I think we can we can move on to the. Great, we've got the first team, uh, Blue, who will be presenting. So we've got Sarah and uh, Marianne. Hi both. Um, feel free to share your screen when ready. Okay, lovely. All right. Can I do? Okay, so am I good to go? Lovely. Uh, <laughs> hi, uh, we're Team Blue, um, consisting of myself, Sarah, Lauren, and Marianne. Let's just go. Right, um, so in attending this challenge, we first arranged a virtual meet to discuss our backgrounds and strengths, divide up the tasks, and decide upon common tools to ensure a consistent approach. During this meeting, we decided on using app.diagram.net and to use a common PowerPoint presentation accessible to us all to collate our work. All three of us had more time to spend during the first week of the challenge. So our aim was to complete a week early. So that's Friday, the 18th of February. And amazingly, we, this was achieved. Um, during the course of the challenge, all three of us worked extremely well together. We kept in constant um, contact through Slack. We all brought different strengths to the task. Um, though we, were, we assigned the work initially to particular team members, in the end, we actually all had an involvement in all challenges. So I'm going to go and talk about the challenge problem two first, logically. Um, so that was to find the next N number of leap years from the current year. We decided to allow the user to enter any year because otherwise it would be harder to test. Um, and this problem was solved in two stages. Um, first, the user inputs a year and the required number of leap years. Secondly, a while loop is used to derive an array of leap years starting at the given year. The while loop increments upwards through the years, only ending when the size of the leap year array matches the number of leap years required. A year is added to the array, the array if it is divisible by four, but if it is also divisible by 100, it is not a leap year unless it is also divisible by 400. So going back to problem one, um, which was uh, identifying whether a number is an admirable number, um, this problem was solved in two stages. First, a for loop was used to create an array of all proper divisors for the input number, excluding the number itself, and the sum of the pro proper divisors. Then a second for loop was used to cycle through the proper divisor array, checking whether each divisor fulfills the criteria that makes the input number an admirable number. Now, the reason I did it in a funny order is that um, problem three is closely related to problem one. Um, this is to identify whether a number is deficient, perfect or abundant. So as previously stated, we approach it in a very similar way. Um, it also relies on an initial collation of proper divisors. A subsequent for loop cycles round, checking whether the number is deficient, perfect or abundant. Now, um, for all of our problems, I'm just covering the first three, um, we use Python to code up full solutions. Um, this allowed us to check our reasoning and prompted some, prompted some tweaks, including the addition of input data validation. Um, uh, we, because of limited time, I'm not intending to show this to you, but you're welcome to see our Python if you would like. So I'd like to move on to Marianne. Oh, no, sorry, I've just pressed the wrong button. Oh, gosh. Where am I? There we go. 
So I'm doing the challenge problem four, and the challenge was to, I'm sorry if there's an echo, but the challenge was to basically get an input string and then remove a specific character from the string and then output the string without the specific character. And to do that, we use the for loop which we use to like loop through the whole string to make sure the whole string is looped through. And, and then inside the for loop, we use the, uh, a way to check if the I index, sorry, one second. Uh, and then we, you, we used to, I we use the index I to check if the character that you want to remove is not the, the one that you want to remove. And if it's not the one that we want to remove, we don't remove, we don't add it to the output string. But it is, if it is, we, do, we, we continue, like we use the continue word, the continue keyword. Anyway, that's how we worked through problem four. And then problem five was a little bit tricky. Uh, we had to do a little bit of validation to ensure that the array, because the problem was to find the second largest number in an array. So we had to make sure that the, the input that a person inputs is not, uh, the array that someone inputs is not less than two items inside, because if it's less than two items, there's no point in looking for the less number. And uh, the other the other thing was to check if any number is what is this called? Yeah, uh, we check if there's a duplicate in the array so that we can actually get the value that we actually want. But the 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 way to actually get the second largest number from the array is we input uh we use two two variables. We use two variables to that is second largest and largest number and we give it the most minimum value that we can think of as you can see in the slides we gave it a value of negative two to the power to the power of 64 which is a very big number and then we use that to check if 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 an, we use a, a loop to check if that if an element in the array is if an element in the array is greater than the largest, and if it is, we uh, we give the second largest variable the value of the largest, and the largest is given the variable of it's given the value of the value in the array at the moment. If not, we check uh, if the array is greater than the second largest value, and we also have to check if that value is not equal to the largest number so that we can output, we can get that value to be the second largest value. And then that's where the, 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 the loop ends. And uh, that is where our, our code, our amazing collaboration ended. We had a very nice time. And if anyone has, any any question? <laughs> yeah, we have uh, some questions from Amit, I believe. So I'm just adding him. Hey, Amit. <clears throat> Hi. So right, um, I saw this whole thing yesterday, and I do have questions. I have a few of them. I can go through what are the limitations in your submission, but I think I'll do that at the end for all the teams simultaneously rather than doing it one by one. But one question which I actually have is, um, can you open? Um, can you share the screen again? I just or or it can be fine, I can share mine, that's fine. Basically, what I want to know are two things. Um, if you can share my screen to other, everyone else. Um, is my screen visible? Yeah, we can see a screen. Yeah, the first thing I yeah. would like to know is, in your first submission over here, uh, where you are dividing by two, um, basically, you're trying to know what are the divisors of the numbers, right? So you're dividing by two. So is this something you guys came up by yourself, or is this because of the point I made to on the call? If you're understanding my question, what I'm saying is you are just running the loop till this half of the number, right? You're doing over here. 
what I'm asking is, uh, was it because of the call someone of the member from your team had with me or was it by yourself? Guys, can you hear me? You're just on mute, Sarah. Sarah, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, it doesn't make sense to go through the entire loop, does it? Yeah, so I'm, it only makes sense. Yeah. So. The reason I'm asking is you're the only team who did this, and it's nice. That's what I'm saying. It's lovely. But um, is it because you figured it out that yeah, it's supposed to go till the half of the numbers only, or was it after my input to one of the members in your group? I think that's what I'm asking. No, I don't think I don't think we had any input from from you actually. I think we, we worked it out ourselves. <laughs> no, we 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 have quite a lot of math, mathematical expertise. Um, in our team <laughs> between us. Um, so, um, yeah, no, we worked out ourselves. Then there's a really nice touch. The other teams didn't do that, so that's actually nice. Oh, and okay. I, can ex <laughs> I can explain to other people who wants to know what exactly is happening and maybe later, so let's not waste time over here. And the mm -hmm. other point would be fine. Uh, the only question for you guys would be, can you tell me what this number actually is? Minus two to the power 64? Oh yeah, it, well it's 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 the um. Uh, have you got the ne the negative or the positive one there? I can't see. Well, it, it's it's the um the, it's the maximum or the or the, or the minimum depending on whether it's got a minus sign or not. Of, of uh, it's the the largest or the smallest um number that you can get in a six to four bit system. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Be confused by this. Um, what they did was to took the lowest number the integer can take. So an integer in um, in any programming language can take a 64-bit number. Can only can the lowest number can be minus two to the power 64. So that's the number they assigned both the two numbers which they initialized to those two numbers. This was also a really good touch. Um, no other team did that either. Um, so that is nice, and that's the only two questions I had for you. I have some pointers, but I'll talk about them in later. Cool. All right. Thanks, Amit. I'm going to bring back uh, Team Green onto the stream so they can present. Um, Sarah and Marianne, thank you very much for presenting. You're free to leave the studio now. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we've got Team Green. So Natalia and Aneta, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, Aneta, again. <laughs> so my name is Natalia, and together with Aneta, Mo, and Paulina, we were collaborating on our common projects uh, as a Team Green. And a uh, short introduction, we started uh, not typically because we've got different experiences connected with uh, coding and different languages, but we never done pseudocodes and flowcharts. So We've got, we had no idea how to approach the uh, problem and frankly speaking, we've been completely lost. So what we've done, we wrote just the codes and then we tried to translate it backwards to the simplest form uh, possible and it wasn't easy. So uh, how exactly our collaboration also looked like? So firstly, uh, we, when we met first time, we asked each other, um what we want to do so if there is any one of us who wants to do this challenge on this challenge so we divided the challenges between us we've done our work and then we put everything into common file on the google drive uh, docs google docs and uh, we saw what we've got what kind of solutions that allowed us to know our approach, our attitudes, learn how we work, and most importantly, understand each other work, because otherwise it would be absolutely impossible. We also have access to the file constantly, so any change was visible for everyone, and we could also explain what we are doing. At the very beginning, we used the PowerPoint, and because some of us had uh, problems and uh, didn't have access, we switched to Lucid, and uh, our presentation is uh, made in that. And also we communicate on Slack only and on uh, Google Docs and that where we updated our work. Uh, we've been always informing each other. 
when when are the changes where are the changes and uh, what is connected with that we've been always questioning and asking questions uh, to each other and uh, in the end we decided to include proper codes real codes to our presentations because we wanted to share with other uh, team members and other teams uh, at cfg uh, if someone wants to learn welcome uh, it's for all of us so uh, i think uh, <laughs> It's a very nice gesture. And I wanted to add one more thing before the, the, the Aneta will take over, but every challenge starts from the question uh, to the user. So the user can see the question on the console and that's how, uh, how it starts. Aneta, your turn. Yes, uh, hello. Uh, so the user is not only ask the question at the beginning, but it, uh, the user is also always getting a printed answer uh, at the end. So if you could move to uh, challenge number one, we would briefly go over that problem. Natalia, do you just want to click on, yeah, the play the slideshow, what we were doing earlier? This one? No, yeah. rem sorry. Natalia. Yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, so so our challenge uh, number one was a uh, problem to solve, was to determine if the number given by the user. So there was a question like, what number are you uh, do you want to check if it's an admirable number or not and as you can see in our pseudo code and in the flowchart we approach it in the following steps so first we take the number from the user and then we store it in a variable then we declare an empty list or array depending on the uh, programming language uh, to store the proper divisors of the number and both of those variables will be used later on and then to determine uh, the proper divisors of the given number, we have to run uh, a loop and use modulo uh, starting from one to all the way up to the given number. And then if the modulo of any of those numbers was uh, zero, we, uh, we would append it to the divisors list. So in the end we had uh, the divisors list, the proper divisors list, and the sum, and we uh, printed both of those variables uh, for us to see if the outcome is correct and for the user. And then the, the final step would be to check the condition. Uh, so if user's number is equal to sum minus uh, two times any of the divisors from the list of divisors, and if yes, the user will be, will be, will be given a, a, the message that the given number is an admirable number. And if no, then we would print the given number is not an admirable number. So that was problem number one. We did all five of them. So now it's Natalia's turn to talk about another one. And challenge problem number two. Thank you, Aneta. So um, the challenge number two was uh, to find the n number of leap years, and that was the question for the user. And um, that was our start. Then the, we saved the input from the user as the variable, and then we declared a few more things, the array where the, num the leap years will be stored, the uh, variable x like kind of counter, and also we used um, date stamp function uh, functions to, to um, use them as a, a current year from where the functions will be working. We, at the very beginning, we had different uh, uh, approach uh, similar to the team, green, team, team blue, but we changed it to stay more on the tasks we, we, we wanted to do. So after declaration of uh, the variables, we, entered, we are entering the loop. And while the counter is lower than the number of the leap years, we are here. Uh, if this condition is true, we are accessing the, we are calling the function which defines uh, different conditions. And depending if the conditions are true or false, we've got, we've got a return answer from the, from, from the uh, function. If the answer is true, which means the given year is a leap year, the information is appended to the list, uh, which we declared at the very beginning. If no, we are just skipping this process and we are going back to the next year. And we are 
repeating this as long as the counter uh, is lower than the number of uh, uh, which user asks. When the counter gets the, the, the value, when the, the process is finished, we are printing all the information from, from the list and the user can see what will be the next n number uh, of uh, repairs he asked or she asked, user asked. So that was the problem number two. And Aneta now will say about number challenge number three. Yeah, we can briefly go through challenge number three, which is uh, very similar and uh, partially it was done in challenge number one. So basically the uh, uh, the challenge was to check if the number given by the user is an abundant, uh, deficient or perfect number. And as you can see, the steps from one to four are the same as in challenge number uh, number one, so we, we asked the uh, number from the user, we stored it in a variable, and then uh, exactly as in challenge number one, we would determine the number, the list of proper divisors and sum them together. And uh, the last step would be to check the conditions if the sum of the divisors uh, of the number is uh, equal, uh, larger, or smaller of the number given by the user. and uh, uh, and the result would uh, give us to uh, we would lead us to printing that the given number is a perfect number, deficient number, or an abundant number. Yeah. So this one uh, we uh, having already solved the challenge number one. The number three was pretty easy to uh, to finish because it was just this one last step missing the different. So now I uh, will leave the rest to Natalia. So if we have time, we can uh, quickly go through number four or five. Uh, I would love to. <laughs> right. So uh, challenge problem number four was show the workflow of removing uh, all occurrences of a given character from the input string. And again, uh, we uh, the program was asking the user for the word and for the character which he wants to erase, and that was uh, implemented as two inputs from the user. And then we've been entering the loop, and we've been iterating from for each character in given world. And uh, that's if the, it, if the character, given character, was different than the user was giving, that was, aha, uh -huh, that's interesting for us, so we want to print it, uh, for, because we want this letter. If it wasn't different, we went to the next character. And we've been repeating this as long as we finish the word and uh, print the new word for the user to see. So that was problem <laughs> uh, challenge number four. And number five, which uh, was the hardest one for us at least, was to find the second largest, largest number in an array uh, of given a uh, list of numbers. So we ask the user again for the number list. We haven't checked how big it could be, so I can't answer to that question ahead. But uh, we also defined that the list must be defined by spaces. Uh, so the, the, the list was given as a string. And all the trick we need to do was to change the string string uh, into the integers because then we wanted to sort it and print, but uh, bit by bit. So <laughs> we are saving the input numbers from the users. We are declaring the variable as a list. And then we are splitting the list using the built-in function into two, like empty uh, signs and just the numbers. We are entering the loop and we, uh, run a loop which iterates through elements of uh, the list and replaces every character into integers and at the same time they are indexed so the results can be later sort and the second uh, number could be printed uh, the second largest number could be printed and that would be the result for the user. So that was our uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Did we love it? Yes. 
the, I would like to work with, this, with those girls again. That was really good. <laughs> That's great. Thank you all for presenting. I think Amit will have some questions for you. Amit, just added you on. Hi, both of you. So the first thing you mentioned at the starting itself, and that's the exact thing I wrote in my questionnaire thing. Was the code written first and then the pseudocode info chat? Because I saw the submission and I've realized it right away. Right? Okay. Well, and, um, yeah, yes, I mean, we couldn't. We just we didn't know how to make it something simple for something more complicated. But we are really beginners. So anyway, you, we learned a lot. You guys we are not just, at all. Trust me. We, <laughs> we just saying. couldn't stop ourselves from writing the codes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also, by reversing the process, we learned how to do pseudocodes and flowcharts. At least I learned. The, and then and now, when I'm starting to code something, I first I'm I'm firstly writing a pseudocode. So for for me, for example, it put in wa, wa, a nice, very nice step by step process. Because usually, when I'm sitting, I've got so many ideas, and I don't know which path to to choose. So doing that, it's really helped me to focus and keep on track. So that was excellent. Yeah. So to be honest with you, I mean, I'm seeing the submissions from you both and trust me, I don't think you should be in this course. And I mean it in a good way because you already know coding properly. I can see from here. The one thing which you, which you realize, both of you will realize when you see um, other two teams and you will see the fifth question, which you said it, it was a bit tricky for you because this is the question where I can see that you guys just um, wrote whatever you did in the code and put it over here. So it was not supposed to be done that way. Python and programming languages provide you with a feature to sort a list and get the second value. So it just does the thing for you. But if you had, if you didn't have those methods, the sorting method and all those things, how would you do it in a coding way? You would see it in submission of team blue and team gray. And okay. that's why, so, sorry for interrupting. That's why I was completely stuck because I followed that path and I thought I can't do that. And then Paulina came with the solution. Let's try differently. So yes. Got it. So um, I had another question was who did the coding thing, but I think you both know it. One knows Python, one knows JavaScript, so that's fine. So I have small points to make. I didn't make to the last team, so I'll um, I'll do. I was gonna do it later, but just small pointers. So whenever you change your code into flowchart, there are times. For example, in your code itself, there are some redundancy. What I mean by that is you are initiating i equal to two over here, right? But then in the loop, you are running i over this range. So i is going to take the value from one to the number plus one. Yeah. So this was kind of not used. I mean, it becomes redundant. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not doing anything. Second thing, you did something over here. Uh, to me also, this is something new. I, didn't, I never did this. But I could tell what you did internally. It's something of form of a comprehend, list comprehension or a generator. And you're using any method on it. To whoever is listening, they don't know this. This is Python related. So this is a kind of a sh um, doing something in one line, but I was expecting more of a loop, but I can understand someone coming from coding and made to do a flowchart would cause an issue. And this particular thing leads to this, the same, same scenario here, that you are in one line checking if any of the number is my multiply to subtract gives you that number, you are done. But it's a loop kind of a scenario, right? But you, you, I don't see any loop over here. You're just right away getting is any no and false and printing if the number is that they will not. But in a flowchart, it's not supposed to be like this, right? So there has to be a loop. And you will see Team Gray's solution, how they did it. What else do I have? Um, the leap year portion, uh, when you're taking an input from a user that what the air is, so on that air, what do you guys mean is split? That was, I must admit, that was this 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 part shouldn't be here. I've just noticed that just before presentation, and uh, I didn't correct it. And because we uh, uploaded the presentation as it was, and we didn't want to change anything to be open and fair and honest. Yeah. So it shouldn't be here. Cool. Um, again, in this portion over here, um, suddenly X comes over and we are basically x is less than so whenever i see this thing i can right away tell in the code you have for loop for x 
something okay. something and that is the x you are using over here and you are trying to convert the code into a flow, in flow chart and i now i can realize what is happening here so again um, in flow chart you mentioned that it was initialized or x will take this value from this list you will say team gray team gray actually did this and um, again uh, in the last one as i mentioned uh, which I mentioned before, that seems like code first and then did the flowchart because I could tell uh, that you are just using. Oh, okay, this is the fourth one, right? Yeah, I could tell over here that the flowchart is perfectly fine. It actually mentions what you are doing, but the, sorry, the pseudo code. But then flowchart, I'm kind of confused what's actually going on. Um, is ch last word? Okay, I don't have time, so I can't go through the whole thing. I can connect with you later on. And same way, I just saw this and I could realize that uh, you're using proper coding terms over here, but for a normal person, sorry, not normal abnormal, for a person who doesn't know coding, for doesn't know coding, they might be confused what are what is happening over here because they don't see any looping and all those kind of stuff. Anywho, but I could realize and seeing the submission, what exactly is going on. Um, good. Your submission was brilliant, to be honest. Uh, really perfection and everything and color coding, brilliant. Um, and I mean, I'm sorry for disturbing. Thank you very much for 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 those uh, all information you've given us because for us it was really hard to put it in simple language. Yeah. So for uh, for us it was a challenge. Believe me, it was. <laughs> it, it was for me as well. I mean, I I to be honest with you guys, in my life I technically have written maybe two or three flowcharts or one in my life. I learned the flowchart thing because to make something for people who are doing this course. I can't give actual coding things. So I had to figure out what actually to give. And flowchart was the best thing. And I had to understand flowcharts and pseudocode myself before even giving to you guys. So I did same what you guys are doing. Um, that's cool. OK, we should move to the next team because we have right. time. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Team Green, thank you for presenting. You can leave the studio now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. And then we have Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Thank you for waiting. Uh, you are our team gray, and I believe you'll be presenting uh, by yourself. That's right. Thank you, Eileen. All right. Do you want to share your screen, and then I can add it for you? Yep. Um, OK. All right. We can see it, so go for it. OK, great. So. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for this opportunity to present our work. Um, I'm here to represent Team Gray, which consisted of Helen and myself. And just to mention before I get started, I have a vocal disorder and sometimes my voice cuts in and out. So if you need me to repeat anything along the way, just say something and I'm happy to do so. Um, with that, I'm going to start by describing how Helen and I divided the work between us, and then I'll talk about our our general approach to each of the challenge questions. Um, and then I will run through our responses to each of the challenges. So first in terms of division of work, Helen and I had an initial Zoom call to review the challenge and make sure we had a shared understanding of what it was we were asked to do. And we agreed to start with a few challenge questions and then look to attempt more if the time allowed. So Helen took challenge number four and I took challenges one and two. And we shared our early work using Google Slides and Slack. And there was some exchange of feedback and ideas, but really we were reserving um, most of this for a second call, which we had every intention of having. But unfortunately, life got in the way and we weren't able to do that before Helen left for holiday a few days before the submission deadline. So I sort of picked up what we had done together, put the finishing touches on our work. Um, and I was having fun doing it and had some extra spare time. So I ended up attempting the additional two challenge questions. So I think in the end, this probably wasn't the most collaborative project that we had hoped, but we did what we could over the two week period, um, given our individual limitations. Um, so um, looking at our approach, our general approach to each of the challenge questions was first to understand the challenge and what it was asking from us and 
what the anticipated output was. And then based on that output, we could think about sort of a high level steps that we needed to include in the workflow, um, giving special attention to um, data and control structures that would help us with those steps. Um, from there, we drafted the pseudocode and the flowchart. I think both Helen and I found that these worked really well in tandem because I'm a very visual learner. I started with the flowchart, but then I found when I actually sat down to do the pseudocode, it helped me identify mistakes in the flowchart. So using both of those tools was very helpful. Um, then the next step was to test with examples. So just putting in dummy inputs and sort of stepping through the flowchart and the pseudocode to make sure that we got the output that we were anticipating. And then lastly, because we knew that some of these challenges had online solutions, for some of those, we checked against what was online um, for our own learning just to learn about different approaches. So let's look at our response to challenge problem number one, which of course we were looking to determine if an umper is admirable. And we knew as part of this process, we would need to um, <clears throat> identify the divisor. So that was sort of the first major step that we were looking to accomplish in our workflow. And um, we did that with a while loop, um, but also importantly, using it a list that was going to capture each of the divisors that were identified for the number that was input. And in that while loop, we also calculated the sum. Um, and both the sum and the list of the divisors were then fed into sort of the second major stage of the workflow, which was looking at the test condition for um, determining if a number is admirable or not, um, and then giving an output to the user. Um, so looking at the pseudocode here on the left and the flowchart here on the right, they're color coded so you can step through either one. So looking at the flowchart, we have the user inputting a number n. We are creating a list, which we call div list, and this will be a list of divisors. And we're also creating a variable sum, and that will hold the sum of the divisors. We're starting with an initial value of zero. Um, we're using i for iteration of our while loop. Um, and why do we start with n minus one? Because we're looking for the proper divisors, and so we don't want to include the actual number in the list of divisors. So we start with n minus one and we work down until our loop stops when i equals zero. So through this loop, we, we sum the divisors and we end up with a div list, which is our list of divisors that feeds into the second part of the workflow which consists of a for loop. So this for loop is going to work through each of the elements in the divisor list, check the, the, the test, the, the conditional test, um, to see if the number is admirable or not. If it is admirable, it is going to break this for loop. And I forgot to mention up here, we are, um, Right before this for loop, we are creating a variable called output, and we have a default value for output, which is the number is not admirable. But of course, if this for loop is broken, when we find an admirable number, this variable is reassigned to number is admirable, and that is the output that is printed to the user. Alternatively, if this for loop cycles through each of the divisors in the list, and doesn't find any that meet this condition, um, then we print the default output, which is number is not admirable. So that's our response to challenge problem one. Let's move to challenge problem two, which is asking us to determine the n number of leap years in the future from a current year. So we also thought about this in two different steps. Um, so first we thought about using a while loop to help us count and- Hi, hey, Andrea. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to check. Are you, are you, cause, um, are you okay presenting? Cause it just sounds like you might be straining your vocal cords. So we just want to make sure you're okay. I'm fine. It's just unfortunately my voice. So I'm sorry. It's not very nice to listen to. No, 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 no. That's okay. We just wanted to make sure that you weren't feeling yeah, yeah. unwell or anything like that. 
Yeah. No, 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 I'm fine. Um, and but it's okay, well, it. most importantly, I want to make sure that it communicates okay. So if there's yeah, yeah, we can hear you clear. clearly. We can hear you clearly. We're just a bit worried. That's all. No, no, I'm fine. Um, thank you for checking. Uh, yeah. So as I was saying, we thought about this in two different parts. So first, thinking about a while loop that is going to help us count n number of leap years um, into the future. And built into that while loop is a function, which we call here leap year. Um, and function leap year is going to help us look at the conditions uh, for a year to either be determined to leap year, in which case it returns a true value, um, or it isn't a leap year, in which case it returns a false value. Um, so if we step through our flowchart, we have the user input n, which is obviously the, the number of leap years into the future. We're setting our year equal to 2023, as in this year. Our while loop begins, the very first step in our while while loop is that we're increasing the year by one. So this becomes 2024. 2024 is sent to the leap year function. Because it is a leap year, it returns true. When it returns true, we're creating a variable called output, and that's setting it to the year. So output would become 2024. And in the meantime, we're going to reduce our counter by one because we've already found one leap year into the future. So now we're going to reduce the counter and continue this loop until we have worked all the way through n. By the time we've worked all the way to down to n equals zero, what we have is our stored in our output value will be the year that is n number of leap years into the future. And ultimately, that is what will be printed out to the user. So let's move on to challenge problem number three. And this was asking us to determine if the number is deficient, perfect, or abundant. So again, we knew that this involved um, working with the divisors of a number um, using a while loop and you know, like the other teams, this is very similar to challenge problem number one. So it's essentially the same while loop, but just focused on calculating the sum of the divisors. Um, and then the next stage of the work workflow is using an if, else, if, and else conditional statements to check the sum against the number itself. So if the sum is less than n, then the output becomes number is deficient. If it isn't less than n, is it equal to n? If yes, then the number is perfect. And if it's not less than or not equal to, then it must be greater than, so it prints number is abundant as the output. Moving on to challenge number four. So this, of course, was asking us to remove a given character from a given string. Um, and so, for, for this challenge, we are using a while loop that is going to check each character of the string and check it against the character that is to be removed. And if the character is not equal to the character that was to be removed, it's going to add that character to a new string. And it's ultimately that new string that is going to be printed and outputted to, to the user. Um, I think the, the key feature to point out with this while loop is that we set i to zero at the starting point, and that's because we understood that in a character, uh, the first string is in index zero. So we start with i equals zero, and we iterate up until just before the, the total length of the string. Moving on to challenge number five, which asked us to find the second largest number in an array. <clears throat> so for this particular problem, um, we set two variables. We have max one and max two. So max one is ultimately going to be the greatest number in the array, and max two is ultimately going to be the second highest uh, value in the array. But as a starting point, we are going to set each of those values to index zero in the array. So they will both have those initial, initial values as a starting point. And then we use a for loop 
that is going to iterate through each of the elements in the array. Um, but I think what is noteworthy here is that we start with i equals to one. And the reason we start with i equals one is because we've already taken into account what is the value that is in index zero by setting max one and max two at index zero. Um, so we're going to iterate through our for loop. And when we iterate, we have an if else if statement. So first, we're going to check this condition. If the number that we're looking at in the array is greater than what is currently stored in max one, then max one is going to become that number in the array. And max two, and this is a mistake here, it should, these should probably be reversed because max two needs to become what max one is before it's um, before it's reassigned a, a value of what's in the array. And then after uh, that, we're going to move to the else if statement. And in the else if we're checking how the, the element in the array compares to what is in max, max two. Um, and if the element in the array is greater than max two, then we are going to replace max two with that element. So once we iterate um, through this for loop, then ultimately what is in variable max two should be the, the greatest uh, number in the array. So we are going to print that as an output. Um, so just wanted to thank everyone for listening and also just say that this was a really great learning experience. So, so much, thanks so much for setting this up and enabling us to participate. Thanks very much, Andrea. Um, I believe Ahmed has some questions. Great. Yeah, um, my, my first question actually really basically is, who did the designing part? Oh, that was me. It's really good, by the way. This is really consistent. Oh, thank nice you. <clears throat> Submission actually is from all the team was perfectly fine. Uh, <clears throat> perfectly good. Uh, this other team, Team Green, was also very precise and all those nice. But I actually loved this first the most because it was precise and nice, good. Um, few pointers for you. Um, I yeah. saw in your pseudocode you actually aren't using i as an um, i as your variable, and you would also might have noticed over here that you eventually used a variable called div. So basically, yeah. each time div will take a value, but you initialize something i over here. So I think you were supposed to do div equal to something, if I'm not wrong. Um, yes, it could have been div or it could have been i. You're right. I caught that as I was going through the presentation. Yeah, yeah. But like the other team said, it was too late to make changes. Oh, that's fine. Um, next thing which I noticed over here is that um, um, rather than saying uh, if you found something as a leap year, rather than out setting output equal to something, this should be a list which will keep on adding those um, areas which you found out as a leap year. So we'll append to a list. You will basically add it to, not make it equal to that air, right? Because right at the end, if you just print output, it will be just one number, right? It will be just the last air, the fifth air or the sixth air, whichever user is asking. Oh, it won't be the list, list of okay. all the years. Am I making sense? Yeah, you're making sense. I think I misunderstood. I misunderstood oh. what the expected output was to be, but that makes sense. You want to see each of the leap years up until yeah, no, the, n. Um, all the all the next, let's say, user says five. So all the next five years. That's what the explanation. I hope I gave the problem. Like I hope I didn't do it wrong. Give me a second. Um, question number two, right? Was it? So uh, to find the next n number of leap years. Yeah, n number of leap years, yeah. like all of them. Yeah, that so, makes yeah. sense. Cool. Um, Expectation-wise, makes sense. That happens. Um, this was perfect. There is nothing wrong in it. It was really, really beautiful to see and watch. Uh, so that's really good. Um, in this one, you almost had it perfectly fine. The only thing was that you need to initiate a string, empty string. So this is basically single, single quotes on which you will keep on adding the ith character. So empty list, then m, then skip i, then skip or whatever Mississippi has, and then keep on adding to that string. So this is the portion which was missing of your thing. So you're saying, right, uh, add character i to the new string. You're not defining that new string, I think, anywhere. Again, this is a small portion of, uh, make sense? 
Yes, makes sense. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're adding to a new string, but you never initialize it, right? It's like a small point. And the last one, okay. you just now mentioned it because I was about yeah. to point it out that it has to be sequenced. And by the way, uh, when I saw this, it was I was so happy to see this because so yesterday when I was checking this thing, I was I saw the question. I was like, how would I do it? Because I never did this in coding. And trust me, I would have done it like Team Green. I would have created a list, done a sort, and get the second value. But that's the Pythonic way of doing it. Other languages might have their own way of doing it. But if you had to do it normal coding way, if you didn't have a sort method to do that, how would you do it? So I literally on a paper yesterday night and ignored my signatures. Um, I literally did this. I created a list. I thought, like, what? how would I do it? So I created two variables, and I assigned the first value to that. That's exactly what you did. And I was, I literally, my face lit up when I saw this thing. Oh, you did the same exact thing. I assigned that. Then I had something. Then I kept on changing what the value of these variables would be. Then I had an if condition. I did the same exact mistake that you are doing, which you made over here. And I made the same exact mistake. Then I corrected, no, it should be done this first and then assigned the first. Then there will be an elif or there will be an else or something. And then the loop will be done. And you did all, almost same. So this pseudo code is doing exactly the same. The only issue is this portion, which you actually just mentioned. So this was good. This was really, really nice submission. And I absolutely loved uh, watching this. So if the other teams are watching, and um, before you leave, um, for the first team whom I didn't point out the errors and mistakes. Um, so guys, for you, what I would say is um, the last one which you had, this is the last one which you had. This was, and I have written over it, this is beyond expectation because this was, you guys were seeing if a number is having more than two or not. If just having two items, sorry, it, if the list only has one item, there is no necessary requirement to find the second largest. There will be only one item. No other team did this. Amazing, good. Uh, taking the largest and second largest, taking the lowest possible value a number can have, minus 2 to the power 64, that is also something interesting and no other team did. To be honest, kind of redundant because you can just assign the first value to the two numbers and just run with the flow algorithm. Um, it won't technically matter. So, but yeah, that's something different. <clears throat> but the thing is, for your submission, guys, uh, Team Blue, this is the only solution in which your loop is actually a loop. What I mean by that is you go into a loop, do something, something, and the loop goes over and does the check and does the and loop runs again. It keeps on running. Like loop is supposed to be like this. For any other submission, if you see, um, you by the way, you never mentioned what current number is. You're checking is current number less than something, but I don't even know what current number is. Current number was never mentioned before. And you do something with that. You increment the value. But I'm not even sure um, what, sorry, yeah, the increment and decrement part is also missing. A loop, usually a while loop has increment decrement part, right? That was also missing. I can come on a call later on and explain. Um, over here, when you write a pseudocode, if air has been equally divided by 100, so what you do in that case, that portion you're missing. So if this condition is there, what do you do in that condition? That part is missing. And moreover, if you find out if a leap year is, if a year is a leap year or not, your code is ending over here. You're not going to the next number. So the loop portion is missing that you are going to the next item and doing. So basically the flow should be there, right? And that's what I was trying to point out in almost all of the scenario. Your code is saying if the, so you calculate what the proper division are. You found one division. Yes, this, this number divides the number, gives remainder zero. You add it to the sum. So zero plus one, basically first number would be your first division, right? One would be your first division. Your sum will always be just one. And then you just right away say if that one is equal to the number or not. You're not checking for all the numbers. It right away says if the number is perfect abundant or not. So this code will always give you that the number is deficient because the number would be some high number and you're just adding a number to sum and you're checking that sum with the number directly. You're not going to the loop again to check for the next number. So you see the loop thing is not correct over here. Same thing over here. You find out you, you add the first character, which is not the character user and entered to, to be removed. 
if this is not the number, not the character, no, it is not. You append it to a string and then you just print out the string. Aren't you supposed to go to the next character in the uh, string? So it has to be in a loop, right? So again, okay, the loop is missing. All right. Uh, so I've seen all these submission properly and thoroughly. And um, should I mention the best one now? Like, so I'm. Uh, I'll just remove Andrea first from the studio, but thank you very much, Andrea, for joining us. All right, yeah, Amit, the stage is all yours. Cool, so we already passed the time. Um, so I think you call out here just to know who is the best or something. And to be honest, I think you guys would have seen how other people presented and what did they present, how their submission was. And you guys would know um, how much effort each team has put. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask the team from Andrea, I don't know if she can answer on comments on YouTube, maybe. Do you know any coding at all? Um, it's just an interesting question. I don't, that won't change my decision, to be honest. But I <laughs> might think that they don't know coding. Um, Andrea, if you can answer in YouTube, that would be nice. Um, the reason is because I see in the other two team submission, Team Blue and Team Green, they coded that first, or some they coded and put that particular portions of code or oh, 20 years ago, put that portion of code into the flowchart and pseudocode. So that's what I can see there, that they coded the things first and then try to make it into pseudocode. Um, that usually, that's, uh, I'm not saying it's not make sense. Each programming language has their own methods and something which you can just use and just readily do things uh, and it makes li your life easy. But that's not how your proper algorithm works, right? So algorithm has to be written in a certain way. And that I could see what Andrea's team, uh, team Gray had done. You could see their flow. You could see, and it will be very difficult to find out mistakes in their submission. That's why I actually like Team Gray's submission a lot. Team Green, uh, really beautiful submissions and coloring, really nice. But you know where the lack is. Um, and you guys by, by yourself know. You guys are really good coders. I can see the submission. Coding wise, you have written proper codes and they actually are proper. You should not be even into in, in, in this course. You should, I mean, I mean, in a good way, you are doing proper coding. There are things which you have done in that code which proper coding people might not do. Okay. Same goes for Team Blue. The last thing which you did for checking if there are even more than one numbers in the whole list and doing the check all those things, usual people and proper coder people don't even think that. And you guys did. That was also, again, brilliant but there were lacks in some other portions. And coming to Team Gray, your submission was, I mean, I had to search a lot to find out mistakes. And they were so easy and nice to read. The You guys actually didn't write any, and I'm sharing my screen again, if you guys can, uh, if Eileen can share it. I literally was able to, to the submission from Team Gray, you can just read what they are doing. And they have written it, add I to div list do this have all elements and i actually wanted something like this not wanted i would have been very much happy with this that if you are able to understand what you have written by yourself the other team would be also able to read this thing and there is a proper flow to this thing and they actually mention even the pseudocode is very beautiful and nice and there is a sequence to it and i absolutely love the submission on team great so for me they, i mean they also have some lack there are things they are also lacking but this is for me is the best submission. So I would say Andrea's team, this was the best submission for me. Great, thank you very much. So Team Gray is the winner. Uh, thank you all so much for um, joining along in the challenge and for joining the MOOC as well with Amit. Thank you, Amit, for your time that you put into this as well. Your um, explanations on Slack have been really great um, as well as uh, your teaching as well. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. So. Um, the Cook for Girls team will send out uh, all the certificates and um, make sure everything else is in order. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them on Slack. But yeah, apart from that, thank you again, everyone, for uh, for joining us um, for the past um, nearly two months, eight weeks now. Um, Amit, any last words? Uh, before I leave, I'll say this is the start of a journey um, for Team Green. It's not a start of a journey. They already know a lot of coding by self. Um, I'm available. I'm available on LinkedIn. I'm available on Slack anytime. If you have any questions or something, I'm always available to answer. And um, it is always my intention to teach something from scratch. Um, I don't mean to discriminate people on coding or even gender or anything, to be honest. Um, 
so if you have any questions i don't even reject people or not answer them so i'm always available um, till my death or something i don't know so if you want to ask any questions later on i'm always available to answer them and i hope you be with cfg and maybe go to javascript or python and there are different pathways so you guys are welcome to join those and um, see you maybe in some python class i'm teaching or somewhere else awesome all right thank you so much all right i'm going to end the broadcast but everyone have a really good evening see you at the next one